All right, so as I was saying, um, Priyanka made some great slides and uh, they're beautifully well orchestrated slides. And uh, the way that these slides are structured, they're for multiple uh, audiences. They're for uh, audiences that uh, are more of along the lines of um, if you teach them or show them actually how to fish, they can feed themselves for a day. So with these slides, I'm hoping to teach future testers for a lifetime. So I, I am uh, of the mind of uh, show people how to teach themselves and then they can learn through their own journeys how to use uh, certain strategies and uh, how to uh, self-heal during events where I'm the only one left and uh, no one else is around to show me how this works or that works. So that's the, uh, one of the main goals of this. So let's start off with introducing myself. My name is Joshua Garaspi. This is Test Tool Strategies for Lone Testers. And uh, again, uh, this is a short introduction. Uh, it's not short, actually, it's pretty long and worded. Uh, I've been a tester for roughly 12 years. I've worked in agency and product companies. I uh, originally came from the background of working with very formal and traditional test teams. And uh, when I mean formal, the specifications were given, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, during the last three years uh, of my career, and uh, about, yeah, about three, three and a half, I became a mega tester. So not by choice, it happened to me. I started studying and teaching myself rapid software testing. And when it was available, I would read through James Bach's uh, RST PDF. He took that down, by the way, because he just uh, recently did a uh, website redesign for Satisfice.com. I would often read through the context-driven approach to automation and testing, and also the session-based test management examples. They're still there, by the way. You can still get to those. And uh, I just started reading it. It's a big read, it's a lot of uh, knowledge to digest, and I don't recommend you to just digest it in one weekend. Just take your time. Lessons learned in software testing, a context-driven approach. It's one of my favorite self-study books at this time. So I enjoy experimenting with test tools. I like inserting myself as simply a tester. I'm very proud of that, and uh, even though my, my current role, uh, I can't really mention, is uh, where it is right, that I work right now, um, I work as a test engineer. So I personally believe that automation is a part of the tester's toolbox. It's not the, uh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, just give me a second. I apologize, this uh, is actually going to see. Try to keep touch so it doesn't get lost. So I believe that uh, the tester's toolbox is buried. It's uh, very, uh, it's very important to know that uh, tools are not all that testing is about. And that's what I try to teach uh, young testers when they uh, come to work with me or if I uh, have to mentor a person to take over something. So a funny fact is I looked up uh, detective scientist because that's what I feel like as a tester, how I feel. I found this, uh, this little NASA uh, article, uh, detective uh, scientist. It's a pretty interesting find. So I have to keep touching this. All right. Uh, before we dive in, I just wanted to be clear about what this interactive presentation is about. Um, FYI, the uh, the sketch, uh, schedule uh, on Test uh, uh, Leadership Congress has an update of the GitHub repo. That's the companion repo for this presentation. It also has the presentation slides, so you can follow along, read at your leisure. I'm going to try and jog through the slides so I can show you all the examples. If we could talk about it, and then. Uh, Really sorry. Okay, so one of the things that I, I uh, want to uh, make clear is this is not an exhaustive list of all the possible test strategies that can be applied to any project or product. Okay, and uh, trying not to give you all silver bullets, your project or product may be unique, and uh, your tester journey experience or career path may be completely different. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I really like from, uh, from the uh, lessons learned in software testing is only you know the context of your work. So you are the person that understands the underlying risks of what you're working on. So I highly recommend you remember that as you go through these examples. And evolving an ongoing exp experiment of, of mine, this, this entire uh, experiment is, uh, is basically this, this uh, GitHub repo that I've uh, shared with you, and uh, also these uh, slides that I con constantly uh, update according to the conference that I'm working with. 
So uh, just uh, keep an open mind. I think that there is just no silver bullets at all for anything, and uh, everyone's working on something completely different. And I've come from uh, I've come from companies where we work on POCs, we work on all sorts of. Uh, in my previous company, an intersection, I used to work on several types of POCs, and uh, it was a very uh, the context uh, switching was very common. It's just it it it's uh, hard to come up with uh, test strategies that just uh, apply to nearly everything because, frankly, they just need to be re revisited, rethought of, evaluate the risk, adjust accordingly. So one of the things that I, I personally am a, a real believer in is, uh, is giving people the tools and the understanding to enhance their capabilities, to work as fast as they can within their means. And uh, I've chosen tools that I, I think are very commonplace at the moment, and uh, we don't know the future. We don't know if uh, certain things like Docker. Docker is a very uh, commonplace uh, containerization uh, tool. Uh, and uh, I, a funny story is I, uh, I was in a coffee shop uh, two years ago, and uh, I was just doing some work and drinking coffee, and uh, I overheard uh, these, uh, these young gentlemen were uh, talking about, oh, this is how you run this container here, this is how you do this, and it's like, this is that. This is this Docker example that the teacher taught. I was like, oh, really? And then I, I was curious, so I walked up to them and said, I'm sorry, like, um, where, are you, where are you learning uh, your uh, Dockerization uh, knowledge from? Are you uh, in a college nearby? They told me, no, no, we're in high school. We're in AP uh, Computer Science. I was like, okay, wow, that's awesome. Wow, this is, like, this is great. And uh, just an FYI, I, I live in Bergen County, so they, they were actually somewhere around Franklin Lace area. That's a very wealthy area. So it makes sense that they got top-notch uh, as schooling and, ed and education in computer science that early. So just think about it. The, the tooling and, and things we look at, it's like, huh, well, I don't really need Docker. I, I just really, all I need is uh, bare metal. Uh, I just need 20 laptops. Yeah. It's, true today, but tomorrow, I mean, uh, who knows? You know, it's like uh, the kids of uh, today are learning the tools we kind of look at today and say, ah, I don't really need that. But uh, just think about that. So uh, Docker is one of my, uh, my go-tos. Uh, there's several go-tos. It's just uh, one of the things I'm covering often today. And robot framework. So uh, I uh, unofficially kind of uh, represent a group in uh, the Robot Framework uh, Foundation, uh, and because uh, I believe in it so much, and it's uh, kind of uh, changed my uh, my outlook on uh, automation versus testing, and uh, just the act of checking that uh, our tests do, is uh, we can orchestrate that. We can be better testers, enhancing our skills if we let our tools enhance our process, not have our process and tools take over us. So I guess I'm very uh, passionate about that, actually. I believe that generic test tools like Robot Framework, where I can, if I need to, just automate a, uh, a fully automated uh, regression suite that just does checks that just do the same thing I expect all the time. Put that in the background, I pull out another tool, a hybridized, uh, sort of a hybridized automated tool, but waits for me me, the, uh, the decider of this particular session, did it pass or fail? And I have a number of, of things that I can implement in that particular session to either say, well, yeah, it did or it didn't. So Robot Framework is that. It's an automation tool, and it's also a, one of the few uh, open source uh, robotic process automation solutions. So if you are, I've, I've talked to a few people last night at the dinner. A lot of people are familiar with RPA. So I highly recommend you look it up. They're one of the leaders in open source RPA. And uh, UiPath is, it, I'm sure it's a great tool. It's a great uh, uh, piece of software. Um, it's, uh, it's also, from where I come from right now, it's not always feasible to buy this license for X amount of money. They want, please look up the open source solutions first, you know, that sort of thing. Now, many of these examples, you don't need to use this framework for. It's just uh, a simple, like, I'm comfortable with it. I've created several uh, prototypes of POC tools, uh, proof of concept tools, by the way. I've been asked before what a proof of concept uh, POC means, and I <laughs> have to make that clear. So uh, maybe you like to write all the code yourself, and I'm, that is awesome. 
and uh, I have to say that that's great for the people that can do that, and uh, I, I, I think it's a skill that I, I would love to improve, but personally, um, and from my own personal experience, after you get used to the natural language syntax of robot framework, you will be able to write tests in uh, under 30 minutes or less. It just, it just makes sense to you because it's using natural language. It's using keyword syntax. And at the end, you could also do interesting things like model-based testing, feeding in a model-based generator that automatically uh, generates a path for your test uh, that, that you're running in either the background or for your, uh, for your own hybrid uh, uses. So let me know if some of this is familiar to some of you. Do you ever feel like it's simultaneous projects this is, this is coming out, there's, there's fires everywhere, there's all sorts of explosions, and then at the same time, <laughs> it feels like this. It's the Wild West, right? So this is not happening, first this, then that. It's at the same time. So before the loan tester, all of you, shows up, the projects, they're fast paced, they're, they're frequently changing. The requirements scope, the client wants more features, you have a client who thinks that Agile means you will get to production next week, right? That's what it means. <laughs> I've had that, I've had that like, um, this my, uh, my team uh, and my, uh, I'm not gonna mention where, but uh, my team and my project, product owner, uh, we, uh, we were sitting down and they were like, uh, well, they kind of expected this, uh, this feature to be done in two weeks or less. So like, okay. And then I looked at the developers like, and like, uh, and uh, I'm like, all right, well done. Let's see what we can do. And uh, they think of software development, it's just how you build it once, right? It's done, it's done, right? Yeah, so I never need to call you for any help. So okay, yeah, give me all your documentation. And it's uh, furious when they see, oh my gosh, there's this bug in production. It's like, you said you, 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 you tested it. Nah, you didn't test it. You have too many meetings. The poss you have possibly more than just your team working on this specific project for this specific IRA client. So you're waiting for that company that's working with this other company, they have that other piece they're working on, they're, they're like, uh, you know, we have the easy thing, so let's just let these guys, you know, they're gonna, you know, mull over the, uh, the, the hard back end work, uh, this and this and this and this, they're gonna do all the, uh, all the platform connections for us, we're just gonna do this and wait. So I've, I've seen it all. <laughs> Your development team is probably spread out across several projects. Like I said, is uh, they're several months into their development. They probably have a wild west approach to tools and to just check their work. So they use different types of uh, means to just check that things are, uh, are working as they expect. They can't always uh, say, okay, this, uh, this is ready for you. Um, let's deploy it to QA, go have at it. And uh, maybe they're only doing it on the machine. So uh, in those kinds of worlds, and now this is, uh, this is just uh, food for thought. After you jump into the one of the biggest of those projects, you're gonna notice very quickly, anything you do means something else is of course not gonna get done. You feel too busy to plan and prepare. You feel too busy to mind your infrastructure. Now your infrastructure at this point would probably be a text document that is like that long of just taking notes, taking notes transcribing what you wrote down in meetings and transcribing it back into this humongous document for just that project. You have other text documents for other projects that are just doing this, doing this, doing this. So that, that might be your infrastructure in like the first three or four days, right? So these are the challenges that you, mega tester, will face. So this is uh, all from um, James Box, a mega tester PDF. I highly recommend you read it. If it's still there, I think it's still it's one of those PDFs that never, thank goodness, because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a treasure for future testers, senior testers, to look at it and say, wow, he's right. <laughs> so some of the suggestions that James Box, a mega tester testing with a team of one, the, one of the, um, there's several things that stood out to me. The test activities and the testing story, think about that. Your strategy in terms of what you need to do, what you need to create in order to do it. Focus on the activity. Uninterrupted session. 
use those lulls, those like, uh, just those, I, I, I mean, I can't uh, imagine what, what a lull is for one person versus the next, but I've, I've seen a lull as like, I got 10 minutes, so what can I build in 10 minutes? Or, wow, I got a real uh, blessing today, I get an hour, so what can I set up in an hour? Use that for preparation. The assessment, think about your strategy. Use the recording tools to shorten bug investigation time. So think about all this as uh, take that all in when we walk through these uh, examples and slides. So before we move on, if you have a computer, you don't need a computer, I'm here all day long. We can run examples together. We could sit down in the corner in between breaks, in between sessions. I'll run examples with you. I'll show you some stuff. We could, uh, we could do that if you have a computer today. If you have Windows, uh, I recommend these. Um, command line tools for Git and also Sigwin or Baboon. All right, so getting to uh, pre presentation examples. So part one is uh, adapting to frequently changing projects. Part two is enhancing those existing tasks, taking your process further. And uh, one of my favorites is uh, in part two, my personal favorite actually, because when you are firing off your processes, you are firing them off on your local via a uh, remote process using a webhook. Either way, you will have your, right in front of you, your hybrid tool that is your brain, your machine, did it pass or fail, and have all of these supporting tools that are, you know, some, some interesting things as well. And part three is to visualize that whole journey, put it together. One of the things that Robot Framework is really good at is combining all test results under one pane of glass, one report, one log, everything either running in serial or running in parallel. If you uh, have a very fast test process that finishes in a minute, I, I think that uh, it's probably better for communication purposes to have it run in serial so that people understand all, all these steps happened in under a minute. Okay, that's great. Now versus it took 20 minutes. Oh gosh, I don't want to work 20 minutes. Break that out into X amount of parallel cases and have that, or suites I should say, it's actually uh, bigger than cases. Have them all run in parallel across X amount of processes. And uh, since we're talking containerization, containers, Kubernetes pods, any, anything you need, AWS, ECS, whatever you, you can imagine. So, uh, and the beautiful part is, Robot Framework comes up with this uh, reusable output.xml log, and it also spits out X unit results too. So you can merge those all in together with all of the other frameworks that, that your team is using. So you're all working under one pane of glass. There's a polyglot team. Everybody likes working under like maybe Python. Some guys like Scala, some guys like Java. We could all come together, talk through one pane of glass. So that, that is actually a, a, another benefit of Robot Framework. We could all coexist together and, and people who are more comfortable with uh, creating powerful strategies can just take the keyword approach, maybe use some model-based testing, which I'll show and I'll try and move quickly because uh, we're about halfway through. All right, so this is again, it's a Block of text, don't worry about it. These are commands that if you have a computer, just pull it off, run, the, run, them, on the, uh, run them on your uh, computer, on your local, if you have all the, every uh, technical requirement installed. Don't worry about this. And at the, at the bottom says, well, I'll answer questions uh, right at the end. So we'll, we'll do that towards the end. Okay, so this part, part one. So two tool strategy examples for adapting frequently changing projects. So imagine in uh, your team you are introduced uh, to a team that is a hypo hypothetical project. Uh, your developers are working on projects. They decide to use tools that they're comfortable with, confident in, and uh, the loan tester just uh, needs to learn as quickly as possible. So you could be contributing to the Jira tasks, the pull requests. It would be helpful to reuse the approaches of the developers or try to set up a CI pipeline uh, process with your work in there as well, using whatever you want, it doesn't have to be Docker, it could be, of course, uh, installed on build machines, but uh, wherever they may be. Now, Robot Framework makes it easy to achieve that, but I'm sure it also anything with a process runner, like let's say, for example, Postman Newman tests. A lot of, uh, I mean, I'm making a broad assumption, but uh, I, I've, a lot of teams I personally worked with, Postman is actually very popular right now for API testing. So, and on top of that, it's really good at uh, API documentation creation, also uh, for creating swagger files, all sorts of uh, fun stuff like that. So it's actually got a built-in test runner and test framework itself, but it also has a CLI option. So it can generate 
a Postman Newman collection um, that you can reuse in your CI. Uh, also, uh, if you are uh, open-minded to it, you could also use it to uh, be run from other tools like Robot Framework. One of the things Postman does not do is uh, randomize test running as of now. I may be wrong. There may be uh, some other workabout, workarounds for that. But uh, using the folder option that's built into Postman Newman's uh, test runner, you can run specific folders in any order you like. So imagine you have a mechanism to define, based on a model, a visual model of your, a graphical model, let's say, of your API behavior. Have that drive what Postman's gonna do. So that, and another example is curl. Sometimes developers, I hate these uh, graphical uh, tools. I love to just run curl command, curl command, curl command. There, I checked everything, I'm good, my stuff is good. So you could also use the robot framework for those, uh, just those straight commands, pull them in, run them in your process. So here's an example too. As a lone tester, you're gonna be probably working, another example here is maybe, maybe you're going to be working in a place where your testing activities are all done by you, you have to do it yourself you should be able to run your own, write your own Python library. Maybe a developer will walk in and just say, okay, yeah, you need help, I can help you do that faster. They'll want to contribute to it. So from, from this, I, I am recommending to, from robot framework standpoint, or I'm, I'm not entirely sure of any equivalent, you have a uh, developer help you write the Python library that is going to support the resources that feed into robot framework, but then again, robot framework in, uh, in reality can pull in directly this Python, uh, Python library itself without any need for any of the other uh, robot framework resources. So a simple folder structure here is kind of what I'm implying. Having that simple, as simple as possible, just these are the tests, these are the resources that talk to these tests and are used by these tests. So if you need any, any uh, guidance or have any questions, this is where the code lives. Just have them look at the Python, uh, under, just have them look at the under resources and go straight there and say, hey, this is where I, I need the most help. Please help me out with this part of the, uh, the automation uh, code. So let's say, and uh, this is a different example, the opposite of that example is uh, also true. So they're like, I'm too busy. Look, I'm too busy, figure it out. Find a way to create your tests, but I can't help you because I don't have time, which could be the case. It could, it could be that you need to get that feature out there. It needs to get out there as quickly as possible. So there are, I believe, about 80, there are about 80 or so, maybe it's increased, it, it has to have increased by now by, by much more, by a great percentage more. Um, open source uh, supported libraries uh, that from the Robot Framework community there's many of them. They cover the whole uh, gamut of visual automation, uh, Selenium, uh, API testing, and uh, they even uh, have some uh, libraries for uh, orchestrating Kubernetes pods, um, Docker itself. It's, uh, it's pretty vast, and I really recommend people try to give it a chance and take, take a look. So, almost that time. All right, so I have to move a little bit faster here. Um, So for this part here, I'm gonna run some, some uh, examples here. Pardon me, I'm gonna be juggling windows and uh, it's gonna be a little uh, challenging <laughs> in 45 minutes. So I'm gonna probably run only two out of each of these. So here's an example of a part one example using Postman collection. So in here, this Docker container will run the Postman collection. Read the results. Show the, uh, the status, which is 200 okay. And it finished in under a minute, nine seconds. So let's do another one real quick and I'll jump into part two and uh, part three we'll just have to play it by ear. So that was Postman. Uh, I could show curl, but I'm sure a lot of you know how curl works. This is a Python library example right here. It's 
So in this Python library example, we're accomplishing the same thing in a different container. I've built the containers uh, first so that it runs in under a minute, well, close to a minute. So it was really fast, well, we're gonna go up here. It's running in serial, and it's running in parallel. Parallel goes parallel as you like, Robot Framework can handle it. I highly recommend running parallel, but also don't lose yourself in the uh, parallel runs, because you'll have like so many tests to uh, kind of like manage now, you have all these X tests to manage, so you have to design your tests accordingly. So that's a quick example for example uh, from part one. So let's move on to part two. So part two of this strategy is, and I'm not going to spend too much time here, uh, all of those examples, all the examples uh, I was mentioning from before, now we tie in some watching processes, some notification processes, tying this into Slack, because uh, people love to use Slack, they're addicted to Slack. So now, what if I had a process now that talks to people through my tests, through my hybrid tools, through my automation, and it talks to them directly as soon as something fails. So that's basically what this slide is talking about. And I also have an example I'd love to share with you that as not, was not in my Robocon uh, workshop, triggering webhooks for your, wherever they are, remote uh, test processes in ECS and EC2, another physical machine. This is, uh, it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a very useful uh, example. And again, not limited to robot framework. You could just do this with any, any tooling you like, any framework you like. So let's uh, go forward a little bit. Gonna speed this up so we can just get to the examples. So for this example here, I am doing a combination of approaches that uh, I'm just gonna basically show these tests that fail on purpose so that they could uh, talk to the team through Slack and they could be orchestrated by me or they could be orchestrated by a Docker container or, or run by me locally running a Docker container. So I really wanted to show this to everyone. These are some git log commands that I'd like to uh, run for you. Again, those slides, there's nothing different uh, that I'm showing here that are not in the slides that I've already shared with everybody through the uh, schedule.com. So I have here, has anyone here not heard of uh, Mule or MuleSoft or S Salesforce? Yeah, so Salesforce bought MuleSoft and this is their repo. <laughs> I'm just gonna show you a quick uh, high level of their repo. This is uh, their, uh, their current uh, community edition product. So I'm going to quickly uh, show a technique uh, engineered at Google. Um, they don't use it anymore, but it's still kind of useful for most people who love to test exploratory style and just want to know, okay, where are the hotspots? Give it to me real quick. So honing in on using Git log, where are the bug fixes? Where are the fixes done? What commits were bug fix commits? What, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I looked at just now 15 weeks worth of commits, and uh, that's, uh, that's what came out. So that's, that's a quick example. Don't wanna to dwell too much on that. I have a bunch more to show you. And, uh, okay, so, right. Let's jump into the Slack notification examples. Here. So with this example here, it's gonna run a container, it's gonna fail some tests on purpose. This is the wrong one, pardon me. What that other example did, it ran randomized tests with randomized, uh, in terms of randomized test data. So uh, it's, it's kind of hard to juggle these because uh, there's a lot of examples. And I want to give, I want everyone to walk out with something today. And um, this is the example with pass and fails. And it also measures the, uh, the time of how long each test ran. So it says here, 20, 222 milliseconds, so there's a listener that also catches how long this is taking, and also will fail it if it takes too long. So from here, my process caught numerous failures in Python uh, library one and two uh, example, 
and set this state to Slack. So let's imagine this is the team Slack channel. So, oh, wow, Josh's, uh, Josh's tools caught something in the regression suite. So let's uh, talk to him about it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you, you use, your, uh, use your imagination on how you could use Slack notifications. Okay, so from here, time check. There's a little bit, there's a lot more I need to show. I'm going to jump into the GraphWalker example. Now, before I run this, I would love to show you GraphWalker is a model based test tool. So, this is an example of one of those models. This is a model of a positive run. So, this is just going to do a simple walk through a, a, a patch, post, delete, or and, uh, a, a JSON placeholder uh, endpoints. So, and the check is on the get. So there is also the, uh, the negative testing path, which tries to break everything and also delay the request by maybe uh, five or six seconds. I forget how long. But uh, here is the example running. So, okay. So this is an example of that of those models running those parallel paths across split out across two robot framework suites. So it's gonna just generating the path, generating the path, running the path. Now these tests here, these uh, these checks, they're not running in a sequence. They are running in a randomized sequence built by that graph, built by both graphs. So they run in parallel and also in a. Uh, I should say uh, actually this is this is all running in serial. My fault and my 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 error. This one is running a very long path generated, generated by the negative and uh, the positive. So it put, pulls that together into one path, feed that into robot framework, and you have a very quick way of setting up model-based testing. So this is a very powerful way of uh, driving your tests. I think that it's, it's something that you should consider, and it's based on a, a model of your system's behavior. So this is uh, actually one of my favorite examples, and uh, it should have a failure baked in there. There, there it was. And that will, again, go straight to Slack. So that your, exp it, I wouldn't say exploratory, it's actually technically just a randomized walk according to a model. So your random randomized walk from that model might have caused an edge case to show up. And also having that uh, running against a, uh, a tool that slows down the, uh, randomly slows down the, the connection will also help uh, in case just to check, uh, well, how does it handle slow connections, whatever it is you're testing against. So, getting, uh, getting close to time. All right, so another example that I wanted to walk through, but uh, I needed to uh, kind of, uh, to train uh, this other tool that I wanted to show, I'm gonna jump ahead a bit because we are almost at time. Skipping ahead, all right, so, I uh, found this tool by chance. So we're enhancing our tests now, our processes. There is a tool called Git Risky that will show you the risks of each commit. So it uses supervised classification-based machine learning to read through your Git log metadata. So this, this tool is actually very useful before you get into the hybrid uh, example that I'll show really, really quickly. And then hopefully I will get to your questions. So this example here is uh, going to be based on my previous run because training this takes an hour. So <laughs> the model is built off of the Git log metadata. So here's an example of a commit that made all of these changes. This is based off of Git command line. This comes straight from Git. There is no code. There is nothing that I did to make this appear this way. This just comes from Git log. It's a basic functionality of Git log. Now this part here is Git risky. So Git Risky, after training that, that model, knew that, hey, this commit is, it's got a, it's got a score of 0.6. So think about that, Josh. Why would, I, why, why would I want to pay attention to that? Well, I want to pay attention to that over something that's a zero. Well, I want to definitely pay attention to something that's a 0.9 out of uh, one. So think about that. As you're exploring, put into the back burner of your brain, maybe I want to check this commit. I know it was committed on that date. And with git log, I can also find out who did it. <laughs> Let's just not, not, I don't want this to be something that, uh, you know, finger pointing a tool. This is just something for testers to have in their brains. Okay, I have this knowledge. 
where could I go? Where can I find the risk? Where can I dig in and detect these problems? So let's uh, move a little bit faster. I might not have time for the Charles Proxy examples. That's actually one of my, actually I'm gonna jump to that first. Now it's starting Charles Proxy for me. This is all run from a robot framework. I am starting Charles Proxy up. Okay. I have a real device here. Now, sorry, wrong one. A lot of juggling. Robot Framework gives this convenient prompting tool. So I'm testing for the mobile changes, et cetera. I'm going to try and move quickly because this is actually. Just try and move quick. All right, so this is uh, a tool based on the basics of, uh, it's an interpretation, it is not supposed to be the like one true method of doing session-based testing. I interpret it this way and uh, feel free to try out your own implementation as well. You know, fill out your, your, your messages passed through the robot framework will end up in the robot framework log, which I will show as soon as uh, I'm done with this example. So I want to fail because uh, I found that the mobile uh, calls, so I'm running out of time otherwise, I could show everyone how uh, Charles Proxy works specifically later on because it's uh, kind of running low on time right now. I'd like to move on to the uh, visualizations. Are wrong, are showing errors. So, one, okay, mobile calls. This is an important part. So, error 500. So now that was orchestrated by myself. And uh, since my, my, my team and my organization love Slack so much, I could talk to them directly from my tool. Have all my Docker containers running in the background. Fire off uh, all sorts of uh, curl commands, which I'll show right here as well. I think that's a very useful example to run. Curl commands, real quick. I've got curl commands running. I've got my hybrid tool process running. I am by myself doing this. Might as well communicate it in real time, concurrently, with the team so that they know in real time what's going on. So here's the long curl command, my fault. Sorry, I'm going to go back to the slides. A lot to show. Five minutes to go. This is the example I wanted to show, and I could show the uh, I could show the uh, visualizations in time. Okay, webhook example here. <clears throat> so, in the time I have left, You could also set up your test process as a service that anyone can call from anywhere. So wherever this is running from, running wherever it is in um, AWS, EC2, that comes out the other end. This side here is run wherever it's running from. Container, ECS, EC2, a bare metal machine in a, in a, uh, a closet. This is somewhere else. This is from the local machine. And, and of course, that, that result is not wasted. It's immediately shot off through Slack to whoever needs to see it, if I can find it. <laughs> Sorry. So, again, same example from before, triggered by a webhook, wherever that webhook is talking to. That webhook could be a, I don't know, Jenkins, uh, Jenkins CI machine, it could be uh, doing it as a post-process uh, trigger. It could be someone in the, someone from um, 
working remote in uh, wherever they're from in any country firing off webhooks. It just needs to be, you need to be able to talk to that webhook. Okay, so we fast forwarded a bit towards the end here. And I'm probably not gonna talk through the Appium example right now because we're at time. I want to give time for people's questions. So this is basically part three is visualizing the testing story. We get combined results here. And I wanna show everyone the process of, of uh, combining everything under one pane of glass. So when I'm, what do I mean by that? So if I take this, which was run recently, I, I would run the command, but it's just uh, more effective to just show everyone because it's already there. My hybrid process can be deployed to a Heroku environment or wherever you like. It could be uh, something in an S3 bucket if you like. It's a uh, static HTML file. A little hard to read here, so I'll just, you know. Yeah, there we go. So this is the process I ran last week. I get to see how long each session took, what I was doing at each session, how long it took at each and every single piece of that session. Now, you could cut that down, you could trim it all down however you like. The, uh, the Robot Framework uh, text dialog uh, library is completely customizable and also open source, so feel free to hack at it at your leisure. So it doesn't need to be all these steps. Most testers like to be accountants. They like to have every single thing. I want to measure every single step of the way. Or maybe you want three prompts. Boom, boom, boom. You could do that with Robot Framework. You could do that with any uh, framework, really, that handles text prompts. I, I don't know of any that does text prompts that way. Or drives, uh, or t one of these, uh, one of the fun things about this process that I personally enjoy I've dropped this in the hands of a developer. I kind of trimmed it down, made it a little simpler. It actually helped them test better. It made them focus on what it is I wanted them to do. And they automatically talked to my test rail as management system. So they were automatically helping me with my work, closing out all these test runs, closing out uh, test rail test runs, opening and closing them, and at the same time, talking to Slack. So that's, that is multiple, multiple, multiple things done concurrently all in one session and I just gave them my package and they ran it and worked with it. So that's, that was one of the best parts of this, uh, this process. So that is, uh, I, I mean, does anyone here have questions about Heroku? I think that it's pretty obvious what it does, right? It's, it, it's built on top of AWS, it's owned by Salesforce. <laughs> Love Salesforce, by the way. I know a couple of friends of mine in the Robot Framework Foundation are from Salesforce, and they're amazing people. So visualize your test process under the same pane of glass. Now, the piece de la resistance, what does that mean? Gather everything together? You could probably make a prettier one. I highly recommend you do. I'd love you to show me your work. Show me what you've, uh, you've accomplished. Make a better dashboard. Make this. Make it easier to read. But no one can argue with this part. It's my favorite part. Hey, I found something. It's, uh, it's important to, to, to visualize that for the people in the uh, boardrooms or whatever important meetings you need to join in. There's the URL. Here's what I found. Here are the metrics. I can show you the whole thing if you like, sir or madam. Well, we gotta do a meeting for that because this is the journey. This is the journey, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You could also collapse it down. It's very easy to navigate through. Just gotta drive some, uh, some arrows down. That's it. And I think that's my presentation. The end for now. Which uh, I think, and references in case anyone's got questions. Wow, it's a minute over. <laughs>